So, yeah, we've all been tracking the whole Gemini 3 rollout, right? But honestly, the last thing I was expecting from Google was a new IDE drop out of nowhere. Yet here we are. Google anti-gravity is out in the wild, and not gonna lie, I literally hit a bug at sign up. Classic Google, right? But even so, I had to dive in because this thing, it's got some wild ideas that feel like they were made for solo devs, especially those of us bouncing between AI tools all day. Just real quick, I'm Daniel. I've been living in the iOS trenches for, uh, what, eight years now? I started off freelancing, working with clients, figuring out what actually works, and honestly, what just burns you out. But after Dub Dub 25, I kind of flipped the switch and went all in on solo dev life. Since then, I've shipped over 10 of my own apps, started building in public, and right now, pretty much all my energy is going into Crafter's Lab. It isn't just another tutorial site or some AI clone farm. This is my actual home base. It's for solo devs who want to use AI like a real teammate, not like a vending machine. So yeah, uh, I'm keeping it short, but if you want your own solo command center and be part of the crew, that's what Crafters Lab is for. And yeah, if you're still on Patreon, massive thanks. But heads up, everything's moving over to crafterslab.dev. Honestly, if you want to get in and lock your membership before things get busy, and before I roll out real pricing, now's the best time to join for real. Come be part of the crew. Okay, so let's just get super real for a second about what anti-gravity actually is, right? Yeah, it's a VS code fork. And look, I know you probably rolled your eyes a little when you heard that I did too. But, you know, this isn't just some random startup trying to cash in. It's Google, which means it's got those, those direct pipes to Chrome it's already wired up to Gemini 3, and I mean, they're promising support for other models too. But the part that kind of blows my mind? It's fully free during this preview. No weird paywall, no waitlist vibes. Just hit download and you're in. I'm still waiting for the catch, but for now, they're letting solo devs hit it as hard as they want, and the only real limit is this five-hour reset thing, which, honestly, I kind of wish Cursor did that. And yeah, because Google's running the whole stack, you get this full-on browser control mode. At first I thought, is this really just for web folks? Uh, but then I started thinking about all the solo app workflows. Like one minute I'm tweaking the dev server, next minute I'm messing with a Figma file, flipping tabs between AI chat and the actual app, having that baked in browser automation that actually starts to click, right? It's like, wait, this is the kind of little detail that saves me from bouncing between three apps just to test one thing. But honestly, here's the thing, the wildest part, the bit that doesn't feel like yet another AI sidekick bolted onto your editor is this new agent manager. We'll get deep into that in a second, but just know it's not some sad little sidebar trying to be helpful. It's a full separate window, like uh, actually treated as a first class citizen. I don't know. It kind of changes how you even think about bringing agents into your workflow. Like for the first time, it actually feels like you could build your own crew of AI helpers, not just try to stuff one more thing into a single chat tab. So yeah, that's anti-gravity, at least on paper. No joke. It's got way more going on than I expected. And if you're a solo dev who's tired of jumping through hoops just to get AI agents to play nice, this is probably the first time in a while where I didn't just close the tab and move on. And so here's where I got a little hyped. The agent manager in anti-gravity isn't just a Gemini 3 chatbot jammed into your code editor. Google's actually separated it out into its own dedicated window, a real manager not just a sidekick squeezed into your workflow. And honestly, that's the piece I've been wanting ever since agents got smart enough to touch files and manage tasks. Here's how it works. You can spin up different agents for each project or even for different types of tasks. Think one for Swift UI, one for Firebase scripts, one for docs, whatever. Each agent gets its own workspace and you can hot swap between them with a keystroke, Command D, open up exactly what you need, context intact. 
It's like building your own mini team, but they all actually remember the job at hand. This is honestly such a small, obvious thing, but no other AI powered IDE has actually gotten it right yet. Cursor, Claude Code, they both live in this one chat window many hats paradigm anti-gravity finally breaks that wall you get to orchestrate your own crew of ai helpers and when you want them to act the agent manager actually commands the editor not the other way around and look as a solo dev the hardest thing is context switching juggling 10 jobs forgetting which window has the logs or what the last plan from your agent was suddenly having the agent be the commander and not just another panel makes it feel like you have a, a real process, not just AI spaghetti in chat. All right, let's just talk about it because, you know, for all the hype and Google's resources, this is still a first gen launch. And yeah, you feel it. There are bugs, some rough edges, classic new Google energy. I mean, that sign up bug I hit, peak beta, no joke. But honestly, it doesn't feel like a weekend hackathon thing. You can tell they actually brought in people who know what it's like to ship indie and agent powered workflows. There's windsurf DNA all over it. Google's not just launching features to tick boxes. You can tell they've been talking to folks who live in the agent trenches every day. What really sets it apart though, every agent can actually control the editor not just leave a note or make a suggestion, but literally act on your workspace. You want a test runner? Set it up. Accessibility review for your PRs? Go for it. It's not pretending to be a helpful chatbot. It's got real hooks into your project. And that's a game changer uh, if you care about flow. The only thing I'm really watching out for, will Google stick with the indie workflow? Like, is this going to stay free or is it just a taste before it all turns into Gemini 3 plus with a Chrome upsell? And will they open the doors to more models or is it going to be locked to their own stuff? For now, I got to say, just having an open, fast, context aware editor that feels like it actually gets solo work, that's a breath of fresh air. So yeah, not perfect, but if you're tired of tools that just don't get the way you build. This is the first one in a while that actually feels like it's paying attention. So yeah, if you're still hanging out, honestly, you're a legend. Not gonna lie, it's kind of wild just how fast all this stuff is moving. One day we're all using cursor and hoping it doesn't break. Next day, Google just drops a whole new AI IDE in our lap. That's solo dev life, right? Blink and suddenly there's a whole new workflow to try out and you know, if you want to keep going deeper or just see what it's really like behind the scenes, come check out crafterslab.dev. I mean, yeah, it's my home base now. It's not just another tutorial farm or whatever. It's where I'm putting all the good stuff, real walkthroughs, little video breakdowns, raw notes from the trenches, and even no joke. You can grab the zips, drop them straight in your own project and just build. But honestly, here's the thing. It's not about just downloading some files and bouncing. The real magic, the reason I keep showing up is the crew members get to riff in the comments, ask those weird follow-ups, or just vent about agent bugs. Sometimes we go back and forth for days. And yeah, you get the full backstage pass to my actual Notion team spaces, playbooks, dashboards, prompt libraries, .md files, all the little systems that keep my own agent workflow running. You know what I mean? It's the kind of stuff nobody really shares in public, how you actually ship when you're building alone. And then, of course, there's the Swift and Swift UI library. This is the stuff I really use. Not just random filler, but the deep dive resources that um, help me fine tune models, spin up my own MCP for Claude Code or Cursor and actually make tools that work for solo devs, not just teams with 20 engineers. The ops lab, that's where all the new agent workflows go first. Notion templates, automations, every little experiment I'm running to keep my stack from falling apart. So yeah, if you wanna get in before it gets crowded and prices jump, now's the sweet spot, no joke. The crew's growing, but it still feels super hands-on. Would love to see you in there swap war stories, maybe learn a trick or two from what you're building. And hey, if you're just lurking, that's cool too. 
drop a comment, DM me, whatever. You know I read every single one. So yeah, keep building, keep tinkering. And honestly, don't let some sign up bug or beta bug or AI bug keep you from trying new stuff. That's half the fun. Peace.